On this episode of The Low Carb Cook, I'm going to show you the easiest way to make this magnificent beast a 14-inch fathead dough pizza that tastes as good as anything you might get two of on a Tuesday or from a high street hut. Now I could literally live on pizza every day for the rest of my life. It's the best round invention since the wheel, and one of those things you'd never imagine in a million years you could still eat on a diet. But this recipe means you can still enjoy one of life's best treats and keep it low carb as well. This base replaces the traditional wheat mixture with almond flour and mozzarella cheese to make a really convincing pizza base. Now I've seen a lot of people making fat head dough pizza, as it's called, online in the last few years. And I tried making it once following the usual messy instructions where they ask you to melt the cheese in a microwave and then use a, an electric whisk to put it all together. But it gets tangled up in the blades and the mixer and it's just an absolute nightmare. Now I have the quickest, simplest and cleanest method to make a monster fat head dough pizza and you're gonna love it. Let's dive in. So just for the pizza base part of this recipe alone, we're gonna use 150 grams of ground almond flour. Then we have 300 grams of pre-grated mozzarella cheese. Now, if you wanna get the carbs in this recipe just a little bit lower again, you might wanna buy a block of mozzarella and grate that yourself because sometimes the pre-grated stuff you buy in the supermarket actually has a few more grams of carbs. I don't know why, there you are. We're gonna to add to that two teaspoons of garlic granules, then we have two teaspoons of baking powder. Now do be careful with baking powder. It's one of those ingredients that has hidden carbs. It's about 35 grams of carbs per 100 grams. So be careful when you're using this in keto cooking. Then we have one teaspoon of xanthan gum. That's gonna keep things nice and flexible. We have one teaspoon of pink Himalayan salt. And we use a lot of pink Himalayan salt in keto cooking. It has a lot more minerals and really good stuff that the body needs as opposed to white table salt. And for that final bit of Italian flavor, we have two teaspoons of mixed Italian herbs. And to bind everything together, two eggs. So how am I gonna make fathead dough pizza without making an absolute mess? It's with my trusty food processor. Now you can pick up a second hand food processor fairly cheaply, but if you're like me, you're really into your keto lifestyle and you're gonna do a lot of home baking and cooking, this thing is your best friend along with your food mixer. So do be prepared to spend a bit of extra money to go out and buy a good machine. It's gonna last you a lifetime. And the bigger the machine, the better. So into this, we put our 300 grams of mozzarella cheese. 150 grams of almond flour and then our garlic, salt, mixed herbs, our baking powder and finally our xanthan gum. And then all you have to do is Leave that on, and what that's gonna do is break down the grated cheese even further until it's a really nice consistency. And while it's doing that, you can have a quick clear up. Now you can see on here that that cheese is really broken down into a much finer material. If we stop this and have a look, all of the large chunky pieces of cheese are gone and you've got this really nice fine grit. And that means when it goes in the oven, that's all just gonna melt together anyway. So this mixture is probably more well blended than the kind of things you've been seeing on YouTube. Now, when it gets to that stage, the next thing you want are two eggs. And my mother always tells me break eggs together and they break cleanly. I'm bad, I've never listened to my mother. Take your two eggs, pour them into the mixer, and that's gonna bind all those ingredients. Now the great thing is this machine's gonna do all the work for you. You just turn it on, let it go. And very quickly, you see this all by itself, look, is blending that together into a perfect ball of dough for you. Look at that, that's it, it's done. Look at that. That's an absolutely perfect ball of dough and I didn't even have to get messy to make that. Now, 
I like my pizzas to be perfectly round. You might like yours to be a bit more rustic and you can absolutely bake yours on a baking sheet and roll out or squish out your lovely pizza dough between two pieces of greaseproof paper. But for me, I like mine to be round. So this tin came from amazon.co.uk and I'll put a link in my description about where you can find one. Get all of your ingredients out of that. Don't waste a bit of this, it's good stuff. Now the easiest way to do this without getting it all over your hands is to find yourself some greaseproof paper and just tear, tear a sheet off and then use that to squish this from the center of the pan all the way out to the edges. While you're squishing this into the sides of the base, just have your oven on preheating to about 170 degrees. And that's just so we can put this in for its first bake. Now remember all those ingredients are already really well mixed thanks to the food processor. So that cheese when it goes in the oven is just gonna melt and it's gonna melt all those great ingredients together. Just tap it down around the edges. And there you go, look at that. You have one perfectly flat, round tin and absolutely no mess. That now is gonna go into our preheated oven for about eight minutes until it's baked just lightly golden and then it's ready to do the next round. So let's pop that into our oven. So while that's in the oven, you can just be preparing your toppings. And for me, you can't go wrong with a Four Seasons pizza. So I have got 35 grams of green peppers, 35 grams of red peppers, 35 grams of yellow peppers, and 35 grams of red onion. And some mushrooms, which are always incredibly low. Now I know these are quite high carb ingredients, relatively speaking, for a pizza, but you can always make them even lower. You could make a meat feast pizza or something else you really enjoy. I also have 65 grams of supermarket pepperoni. This is really low in carbs. That's great stuff. You can eat that anytime just as a snack, but love mine on a pizza. Now, of course, traditionally with pizza, you're gonna have a tomato topping. Personally, I prefer barbecue, and you can pick up these skinny sauces. There are other brands available, and that's zero carbohydrate. So you can have a skinny sauce right there, or you can have their tomato sauce. Personally, I'm quite happy using, this is from Asda. It is a pizza topping sauce. It's 250 grams for the jar. And we're talking about eight grams of carbs per 100 grams. We're probably gonna use about half the jar. So 10 grams of carbs split over a pizza between a couple of people. It's not that bad. So let's check out our base and see how that's going. Yep, look at that. That's absolutely perfect now. It's only just starting to go brown around the edges and we don't wanna overbake it at this point. If we do, then it's gonna be really dark when it's finished. So that's ideal. Just put half a jar of your tomato sauce in there. Again, you can use other sauces if you want to. But if you want that real pizza experience, you want a really rich tomato sauce. Take a spoon and smear that all over the base, leaving that nice little bit to hold around the edges. There, perfect, okay. Now, you want another 200 grams of pre-grated mozzarella cheese. Just sprinkle that over the top there. Save a little bit of this, hold some back because you're gonna to wanna to sprinkle a bit over the top just before it goes in the oven. Awesome. Now for me, pepperoni, you can't go wrong. You can really take your time and make a piece of art if you want to, or you can just chuck it on, really doesn't matter. And then best bit, take your vegetable ingredients, your lovely fresh peppers, mushrooms and onions there. Just liberally sprinkle those over the top. And then finally, that last little bit of cheese, just over there. There. 
that's ready to go back into an oven, which is now at about 240 degrees centigrade, because you want to cook a pizza at a nice high temperature. So here we go, put this back in. There we go. Now, while that's cooking in the oven, this is the perfect opportunity to make some homemade garlic and herb mayonnaise, perfect for dipping those crusty bits in. So you can make this at home. Just grab your full fat mayonnaise. Anything from the supermarket is good. Squeeze a good amount into a little tub. I like to use the pre-crushed or pre-chopped garlic. And then just add some more Italian herbs. Just mix that together. Because you don't want any of these sugary things that you get from these places. You want to make your own and know that that's a good low carb dipping sauce. And that is mm, perfect. So now we've got to do is wait for that pizza to come out of the oven. So that's been in for about 10 minutes. Let's check now and see how that's doing. Oh, yes. Perfect. Golden brown, look at that. Tell me that's not like a pizza that you would see from any high street shop. That's absolutely fantastic. Looking and smelling absolutely delicious. So let's just pour that out onto our pizza stone. That's gonna keep it nice and warm. And there it is. The absolutely perfect fat head dough pizza. And to finish it off with a bit of garnish, just throw some absolutely delicious basil on top. That's it, it's your turn. I want you to go off now and make your own versions. Send us pictures, tell us what toppings you like in the comments below. And we'd love to see what you come up with. But for me, there's only one thing left to do, and that's dive in. That is some damn good pizza. Join me for another episode of The Low Carb Cook, where we'll be making more delicious keto and low carb recipes for you to enjoy at home. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to us here on YouTube and ding that bell for more videos as soon as they're uploaded. We'll see you soon. Hey, thanks for watching The Low Carb Cook. If you enjoyed this episode, why not watch one of our playlists or this recommended video? Click on the logo below to subscribe. Join us on any of our social pages. Or if you'd like to show a bit more love, you can support the channel on buymeacoffee.com using the link below. For even more great stuff, check out the website, thelowcarbcook.com.